Chapter 1. You must envision your podcast before it sets off. Since you have decided to create a podcast, you first need to answer the critical question. Do you want to start a podcast? We all have different reasons for starting new ventures. But for one as involved as a podcast, you must have an apparent reason for why you want to create one. For you, the reason can be to sensitize or share your genius or interests with others. Without a valid reason for starting up a podcast, it is destined to fail. Once you know why you wish to start a podcast, you must select your audience, then seek to grow it or even attract a new demographic. Your message must be crowd-specific, so identify who you will be making weekly or monthly content for. Your audience members should be treated like your biggest fans, and therefore are owed quality and consistency. It would be in bad taste to churn out low-quality content at an inconsistent rate. You'd risk losing your listeners. So it is essential to make sure your audience is well taken care of, because there would be no podcast without it. But it's not only essential to know who you wish to entertain with your podcast. You should also discover what it should be about, because your podcast's content is significant. It is like the DNA or identity of your podcast. It is what the listeners will associate with you and your platform. So there must be careful consideration and planning invested in the content creation part of the process. The quality of your podcast is hinged heavily on the content you put out through it. The content of your podcast is a vital ingredient and should get your full attention, but it is also essential to identify your sources of inspiration. This is where you get to refresh your ideas based on the material you gather. It is essential to sift through the content you've collected, making sure it fits in with your regular output and doesn't promote or instigate any ill line of thought. Lastly, it is essential not to give yourself and the audience an inflated expectation for just how much work you'd be putting out. This way, you can run for long without getting burnt. The following chapters contain valuable tips and tricks to ensure your podcast is thriving and stands out amongst the rest. Chapter 2. Putting the plans for your podcast into realistic formats. Now that you have the mental framework for your podcast, it is time to move a step forward and write it down. Simply put, you need to write the layout for the podcast going forward. The first thing you must do is establish a format for your podcast, the style or pattern you want to follow. For example, it can be an interview or social commentary format. You must have a clear vision of what design you want. Setting up a clear plan for what the podcast should look like is essential at the early stages. Next, you'd want to create a structure, a set pattern that your program will follow throughout the history of your show. This includes a detailed breakdown of what to expect from the program, when and for how long. This structure forms the spine of your presentation, a familiar feel for the audience to trust and rely on. Establishing a consistent schedule gives you the freedom to determine just what goes out from your platform and when. When you create structure, you build up the audience's trust in your process and content. Also, your focus needs to be on the start of each episode, the top. The way you start determines just how good the remainder will be. The audience will be focused on the beginning of the podcast, and if you can capture their attention there and then, you'd have them for the long run. After settling the top part of your podcast episode, it is only standard that you proceed to write a script, something to spice up the show, grab the audience's attention every time. You can't keep churning out the same content every day, and there has to be some kind of variety. I tell anyone who wants to be a podcaster the same thing others have recommended. Find a niche you're passionate about and willing to be immersed in. Sandra Seely. Did you know, according to an Edison research survey, the average podcast listener in the U.S. plays eight podcasts per week. Chapter 3. Sometimes for the success of your podcast, two heads might be better than one. With podcasts, a bit of diversity might be a good addition to stir up a new feeling among the readers. This shows that you are willing to experiment with new ideas and are not afraid to touch the topics most in the audience want to hear but are too shy to say. A diverse podcast addresses different themes and issues to reach a larger audience. The more themes and topics a podcast explores, the greater its audience, and thus success. As you brought in your topic and theme structure for the podcast, you must seek the input of others more versed in these other fields aside from the one you dabble in. This means you'd be inviting co-hosts either regularly or stick to the same one as you two take the audience on a joyride through varying topics that hit closest to home. A co-host is most beneficial for a budding or even successful podcast because they come with new ideas and input that offer the podcast a much-needed edge over its competition. A second mind contributing to the content of your podcast is often a win-win situation. It keeps you sharp and also makes sure your show has a diverse and rich wealth of content to choose from, appealing to more and more people in the process. A co-host can be a profitable addition to your podcast, and the trick is knowing how to manage the extra hands on deck. Tensions can grow, and egos can collide when you have a co-host, but you must ensure you navigate the situation wisely and maturely, not to jeopardize your established brand and audience reach. A co-host should be a team player, the same as you, trying to get the best for the podcast, helping you out in areas you fall short. Did you know, more men, 36%, listen to podcasts than women, 29%. Chapter 4. Your podcast requires you to invest in its structure and quality. The podcast cannot run autonomously. It requires you to steer it. in the right direction at all times. Consider it your pet project and you have to tend to it constantly or else it will fail. You need to screen the kind of people you invite to your show, making sure they add more content to it instead of unwanted bad press. It would be career suicide to let just anybody on your podcast weed the crop. You can effectively curate the right crowd by conducting interviews. Chapter 5. The right equipment will make your show stand out among the rest. As a host, there are many skills and tools you must both acquire and employ throughout your career. And many of these are the difference between success and failure. The defining factors of a successful podcast are the quality of the equipment and the tools the host utilizes to bring all these to the forefront. Social skills are a great set of tools you must possess. When you have guests on your show, you must be able to connect with them.
making sure they're not isolated and badgered with soulless questions. Also, connecting with your audience is a vital tool to learn and teach as a host. A great host is armed with all the necessary skills and tools required to succeed. You must have an ear for what the audience wants and know how much it can take per episode you produce. First, you need to have your feelers out for what they like about your show and stuff in general. Next, you must think of ways to use this information to your advantage to increase your appeal. Your audience has a voice. Listen and give exactly what it wants. Knowing what they don't want to hear on your show and in general is also essential. Weeding your presentation of these red flags will help increase the number of listeners of your show day after day. One last tool is time management, and it is essential to know just how long a show should run so as not to bore the audience while giving them enough entertainment. It doesn't matter if you've never picked up a microphone in your life. Before I was a podcaster for three decades, I also hadn't picked up a microphone. Kristen Meinzer. Chapter 6. To grow your podcast, podcast, you must share it, putting the word out. For the growth of a podcast, the host must look into a few things that will improve its reach and audience base. Example, that can act as advertisements, direct or indirect. Without these, the podcast will simply wither away. You must first create and share a release schedule so that listeners know when to expect your content. To truly captivate and solicit the continued loyalty of the listeners, you need a strict release schedule. Also, you must invest in a proper and inviting poster design, something that instantly catches the attention of intending listeners. When your show comes wrapped in fancy wrapping paper, the audience will line up to unwrap it, so be ready. This can be the determining factor for the reception your podcast will receive. Think about creating financial profit from your podcast, and this can be done by monetizing the listener's subscriptions. When more listeners subscribe, that will increase your revenue, and as such, give you much-needed funds to grow and expand your reach exponentially. The bigger your listener base and social media community, the larger your audience and reach. To get people to subscribe would mean getting the word out. This has been made easier with the advent of social media today, and you can do an ad free of charge and get a rousing response from listeners. So learn to navigate and utilize the advantages of social media. You also need to grow your community on and off social media. These are the foot soldiers who will take the gospel of your podcast to the ends of the earth. Did you know, podcast listeners consume more than 105 minutes of audio per day than the average American. They spend more than 25% of that total audio time listening to podcasts. Conclusion A podcast can be a journey of self-discovery for both the host and the listeners. It must be approached and treated with utmost care and attention to avoid making a mess of things. You must first ensure you know exactly what you want your podcast to be like and the content you wish to put out consistently. Once you establish this, you need to write it down, make it real. When the plans are running through your mind, they lack any kind of substance until you write them down. It is okay to diversify your audience by infusing new ideas and themes into your podcasts. Do not shy away from a change in the norm. It can be your edge. There is strength in numbers, and therefore, it is not weak if you enlist the help of a co-host to help you bring your podcast to a larger audience. New ideas and input from experts are an essential need for any budding podcast. You also need to be fully invested in the spine and inner workings of the podcast, always ready to reinvent the script and give listeners something new and fresh. This way, you will keep them interested and informed instead of bored. Cultivate the right attitude and utilize the right tools at all times. The sharper your skills, the better your podcast will do. Lastly, it is pertinent that you invest in advertising. Letting people know about your podcast isn't patronizing. It's sensible business. Podcasting has become one of the fastest and most trusted tools slash channels for building and promoting brands. Bernard Calvin Clive. Try this. There's no special skill one must be born with to start a podcast. Anybody can, even you. Follow the simple steps laid out in this book and start your journey today. Here are steps on creating your podcast topic. Brainstorm. Audience research. Evaluate the market. Create a list of content. Evaluate the pros and cons. Sit on your idea. 